Hey, how you doing? It's James here again with another video for you. And in this one, again, it's going to be based on the principles outlined in the New Influence Report. And if you want to get your copy, just scroll down, click on the picture of the report, and you can get it. No email address required. You can get it for free. And today I'm going to be talking about ownership and uh, collecting, this whole idea of ownership. And in, uh, in my hands, I have a black box that I'm going to tell you a little bit about that in a second. But first, before I do, um, you may remember in 1977, I think it was, a film came out that completely revol revolutionized cinema. I mean, completely turned it on its head. Um, there were a few films before this particular one that tried their hand at what this film ended up doing, but never really got it. After this film, things changed. People didn't just go to the cinema. After this film, people bought the merch, they bought the t-shirt, quite literally. They bought the bed clothes, the lunchbox, everything. The film I'm talking about is Star Wars. The Star Wars, well, certainly the trilogy. We won't talk about the, we won't talk about the new films, all right? Jar Jar Binks, what's that all about? Forget it. Um, but certainly the original Star Wars film completely changed the way we looked at the at film and also they used very well the principles of things like emulation they had archetypical characters that people emulated and wanted to be i mean how many how many of us in the playground were were luke skywalker or han solo if you're the same kind of generation as i was uh you know how many times did you emulate some of those characters okay that's because and then maybe in later videos i'll be able to share some of this but it, they represented very archetypical character types okay um so basically the revolutionized stuff and it got people to spend money <laughs> more than just paying for the cinema ticket and then buying the movie you then could buy a whole range of things that reminded you of your heroes okay now um i like those films i gotta tell you the first three certainly they uh, certainly were of my generation and they struck a chord with me but then i'm the film watching comic book reading kind of kind of guy that i was when i was in my teenage years anyhow um, I still do a bit secretly. I just, you know, <laughs> keep that quiet. Um, but in this box is something that I bought and that cost me a considerable about amount of money that I bought because not only did it give me a greater sense of belonging um, and uh, also because I emulated various aspects of, of this film. I'm just being open about these unspoken influences here. But also because I had to. I felt this great desire to want to own what I'm about to show you um, because I'm a bit of a collector like this all right now and we're all collectors in our own way and we will certainly in particular I'm just going to take the lid off here we will certainly always strive and yearn to own things to which we belong okay because if you remember from the report it gives us a greater sense of significance then within that kind of group now I've just taken the lid off this box there's a famous scene in the film in the very first Star Wars film, Episode 4, where Alec Guinness has got the, the young Luke Skywalker at his house. Uh, and he goes rummaging around in a box. And he pulls something out of the box. And he goes over to Luke and he said, Your father wanted you to have this when you were old enough. And he's like, What is it? It's like a hunk of metal or something. And he goes, It's your father's lightsaber. And I don't know if you can remember when, when you were watching this, you were like, oh my God, What is it? What does it do? For the very first time. You remember the very first time? And you were like absolutely enthralled. And then suddenly he fired up the lightsaber and across the globe, gives me shivers even thinking about it, across the globe, a generation were transformed. Never again would we would we kind of be able to calmly watch a space film or, you know, engage in play in the playground of our schools and the schoolyards without pretending to have a lightsaber. Anyway, I saw that there was a company uh, that got access to that lightsaber, that very first lightsaber. There was a company called Master Replicas that got access to it, and they were given the license to produce 1,000, just 1,000, that's it, 1,000, in a, in a planet of billions, six, seven billion people, they were given the license to create 1,000 exact replicas. We're talking down to the finest detail. And I was very fortunate enough to acquire one of these, and here it is, your father's lightsaber. Um, this is a real, it's weighty. That's the thing you get when you when you first pull it out of the box. The thing you really get is the, the weight of the thing, okay? And I'll just bring it up to the camera so you can see it. This is an exact replica of the lightsaber that was handed to Mark Hamill by Alec Guinness 
in whenever they filmed it, 1976 or so. Um, it's an exact replica, and there's only a thousand of these on the whole planet. And it's it's just absolutely wonderful. Now, really, it's just a hunk of metal with some rubber bits on it, okay? But to me, this is one of my most prized possessions, exactly because of the principles that I've been talking to you about, okay? Now, um, I mean, just take a look at that. It's so beautiful. Real, very, very heavy. That's the thing that you'll most get by, by picking it up and and uh, holding it is, is it's heavy you could almost you could almost feel like you could fire it up it's it feels like that okay um and um like i said only a thousand of these every may ever made they're not cheap to to come by and i i wanted one so i made sure that i got one but i wanted to show you that by way of uh explanation and really a, a kind of a live demonstration of the principle of ownership okay if you can ownership happens, if it's done well, it happens as a natural byproduct of doing the other principles well. Okay? If you can get a sense of belonging in your group, if you can kind of induce this feeling of envy and emulation, then when you create higher priced or more exclusive or limited editions, that's a limited edition, there's only a thousand of those on the whole planet, right? What it does is people will strive, they will yearn to own it, okay? Another way of using ownership, by the way, is in this kind of, I call it the collect all four mentality. It's where if you've got one, but it's of a series, the desire when you only own one or two to own the rest is huge. And it totally, again, it bypasses rational our rational brain. This is rooted deeper than that, okay? So logically we say that desire to own the other three you do realize that's completely irrational, don't you? And people will go, no, and they'll build a little story as to why they should, okay? But I wanted to show you that because it's a live demonstration of where it completely, hook, line, and sinker, I was taken in by this ownership thing because I'm not a member of the Star Wars club or anything like that, okay? But I love the films. They had a major impact on me. Um, and sure, there's characters in there that I absolutely looked up to when I was a kid. And even now, gosh, Yoda, what a cool guy, you know? And so... When the chance arose that I could buy and own a real lightsaber, I leapt at it, and I didn't. I didn't think at all about the associated cost that came with owning this hunk of metal. I mean, it's completely irrational. It probably cost uh, a couple of tens of dollars to make this. Literally, you know. I mean, once they had the the mold and all that kind of thing, it's not molded either. It's been well engineered. Actually, this probably cost a little bit more. This probably cost about a hundred dollars to make. Okay. But in terms of its actual raw material, I can't do anything with this. It's just something I can possess. That's it. And that's exactly the point. So if you can, once you've got your group, once you've, um, once you've uh, got areas or parts or elements or, or aspects of you and what it is that you do that people really want to emulate, okay, then when you introduce the chance to own something, to possess something that not everybody can get, people will jump at the chance. Not only that, by doing that, it then feeds the next principle, which is it increases their significance within your group. Okay? So, and you see this all the time, by the way, at things like Tony Robbins seminars, uh, where there is this very clear hierarchy. There are the people that have only done the weekend training. Then there are the people that have been through all of Mastery University. And it's, and it's, and it's weird, you know, when you go to those meetings, you see people who are like, what have you done then? You know what a you know what a you know how far have you been through the Tony Robbins training? In fact, there's even an online group where you can go if you've done any Tony Robbins trainings, and that's what people want to know is how much have you done, how 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 far enrolled are you, how much ownership and significance do you have within the group? So anyway, take that idea and run with it. Look at your business and how you can manufacture these things, and I will see you again in the next video.